Uh, oh. Mm, hello, artists. How are we doing today? Welcome back to my studio. Welcome back to this channel. Love to see you guys again. So today I'm going to be taking you through the process of my project, which was basically creating my own Holbein watercolor set and putting it into a nice little tin, unwrapping, swatching, and demoing everything with just a kind of a simple citrus painting. Now I really want to do more detailed work with these paints because these paints are so amazing and it never ceases to um, I mean, amaze me that they create such wonderful products. Holbein, across the board, I have never come across anything that they've made that I've been kind of like, eh, subpar. So, I had had a few pans, and I was really excited to use them, but I just kind of went all in one time and did a haul, and I went for it. And this is kind of my process of putting it all together and talking about the process, and I actually injured myself in the process. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and start the video. All right, see you later. It's that time. It's that time, folks. It's time to pour in some Hawaiian watercolors. Now, I've been collecting tubes and pans over the past few weeks. And some of them I made a decision after I did my watercolor dots. And thankfully, my local art supply store has custom sets that you can make. And they give you this free tin. But my tent's going to have to be a little bit bigger. Pretty cool, huh? You can order up to six, nine, or 12 custom colors. And they can have different themes. Like if you're doing just portraits, they can pick out uh, what particular colors would work for you for portraits. Or you could do mixing colors, bright colors. Mine was kind of like a mixture of bright colors and mixing colors. So I'm going to pop these on out and let's get started. I'm trying to figure out which kind of tin I'm going to have to use. I'm going to count up all these colors and see what I got. Folks, this process took a lot longer than expected. What I ended up doing was first aligning all the colors from tubes and pans to create a palette that was cohesive. And I also kind of went a little mad <laughs> trying to unwrap the whole bind pans, which you'll see in, in a while. It was just absolutely crazy. I was like trying to get into Fort Knox or something. Um, Holbein are actually known for their purity of color, but also for the many, many of their colors being non-granulating, which is not a negative thing or a positive thing. It just, it depends on preference. Holbein are also known for not having any ox gall in their formula. So I found this watercolor to be very easy to control and that's something I like. So that also means that they retain their brilliance once they're dry. And I also found this out to be true. So I'm super happy about that. But to pour pans, here's a quick tip. Um, make sure that the edges are filled so it dries down properly. I just somehow now learn this. I don't know how I've gotten by without this, but <laughs> you can do this with a brush as you can see, as I'm doing, or you can get a toothpick out. But once those dry down, they'll be about halfway full. And then later on, I will fill them up once more and uh, to make sure that the pans are full. Ooh, look what I picked up from Amazon. All ready to get on in there. So we're gonna do that. Oh Lord, come on. Oh my God. Oh, finally. So there's a magnet on the back. Yay. And so this is what I'm gonna do with every dried one that has been poured. Is that the word? Poured in the pan? Oh Lord, no. We, we wanna leave that out, don't we? Okay. We gonna leave it out. <laughs> you know what? This is gonna take some time to unwrap all these. Yay. Woo! Okay, I injured myself. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Oh my god. Oh, never mind. I'm silly. I bought one.
Okay, my fellow artists, it is swatch time. And I'm excited because I decided to show you these in real time and up close in full color. So that's what you voted for on the community tab. So that's what you're getting today. And if you want me to have a dedicated swatch video series, maybe something casual like Swatching Sunday, I'm definitely considering it. So let me know in the comments below what you'd think. If you'd like, like something like that, that'd be pretty cool. By the way, I'm swatching these on Artis' 100% cotton paper and using my Mimic Kalinske round brush from Cherry's Art of Rama. When I was picking out these colors, I obviously wanted bright, vibrant colors, and this isn't an issue with the brand as mentioned before because they are Oxgall free. So I wanted to get your typical warm and cool mixing colors like lemon yellow, cadmium red deep, ultramarine, etc, etc, and I did my best to make sure I included many single pigments. But honestly though, I feel like as long as you have your mixing colors, from there you can just create whatever palette you desire. And I wanted something that could help me not only create portraits that I wanted to, but also florals, more illustrative styles, or landscapes if I wanted to. Um, I did have an intuitive feeling that the way that these watercolors perform would work perfectly for me. And, and I was right. So, you know, you know how something just feels right and just fits right. Maybe you've got a favorite dress or shirt and it just fits in all the right places. That's what this watercolor is to me. And I just, I love color, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> so I love to, to, I love colors to just stay vibrant and mix well, layer well, and stay light fast if possible. So Holbein has some truly unique colors in their watercolor selection. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, we got bright violet coming up here. It is so pretty. Unfortunately, it is fugitive. It's not very light fast. And, uh, and of course we have opera, but you know, these things can always be scanned and created in, you know, with prints if you're making prints. And Sometimes I'm not always, you know, I'm not always putting my work behind glass. So um, light fastness, I do take it into consideration and I love it whenever something's light fast. But if it's not and I still want that color, I'm still going to use that color. One of the things I loved most about working with these watercolors is that they were very easy to control. And I do know that some of that is an artist's personal painting technique, but it does have a lot to do with the brand that you're using and the colors you're using. And it just makes the entire experience so much more enjoyable whenever you have art supplies that cooperate with you. So I do apologize. I kind of had to cram this row in here and I plan to make a better swatch chart. So I just, I wanted these to fit inside the palette. So I had to keep it a certain size. And in this row, you'll see some beautiful blues and greens. And some of these unique colors include peacock blue and marine blue and bamboo green. Oh my God, it's such an accurate, beautiful color. And then we'll go into some of the more traditional colors like burnt sienna and burnt umber. And uh, they do have this gorgeous black that I bought called peach black. And it's in my watercolor, Holbein watercolor dot video if you wanna see a more accurate swatch because I kinda had to cram it in here. It's a lovely, dark, warm black. But oh my gosh. We're gonna have bamboo green coming up here we go oh my god look at that beautiful color oh my goodness it's just it's such an inspiring color also if it all works out I will be swatching all 108 Holbein watercolors and I don't want to give it away just yet but let's just say I'm looking forward to it demo, I'm going to be showing the process with both time lapse and several moments of real time techniques, as you'll see, that I'm using for this citrus piece. And I took this photo from 
A larger photo off of Pexels.com, I have a lime, a grapefruit, and a lemon. And even though this isn't the most detailed or revolutionary piece I've created, it's what I wanted to paint in the moment. I was very, very inspired by the summer and spring aesthetic. I had spring fever. I just thought of all of the beautiful pastels and bright colors that go with the seasons. So I started with the lemon yellow as the base for the lime and the lemon. And this gives the illusion of a nice, warm, transparent look as citrus fruits have on the inside. And I actually used a mix of Indian yellow and just a touch of vermilion for the grapefruit base. I used light feathery strokes to create the inside of the lime and on the other fruits as you'll see. So the best part about painting this was that it didn't have to be exactly like the fruits on the inside in the photo. So it, it just, it was a general guide. And I was focusing on creating the illusion of textures with layers. So I went back in and worked on the rinds in the second layer here using a stippling method and adding some leaf green into the mix to give that illusion of texture. I made sure my second layer of feathery strokes here were slightly more opaque and that I wasn't just overlapping the first layer and covering it up. So I made less calculated moves and more spontaneous strokes. I believe the grapefruit was actually my favorite to paint out of all three for the variation of color that it had. And I used the tip of my brush to add more detail and used a mix of vermilion hue and just a touch of cadmium red deep to brighten that second layer there. The variation of strokes let that first layer peep through and make it look more realistic. So layer, 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 that is one of the biggest keys to realism is learning how to effectively layer your colors. For the second layer of the lemon, I just added a little more um, Cambodge Nova to the lemon yellow to make it brighter and more opaque. It wasn't the most exciting fruit of all three, but it looks good in the end, I, I think. So for the third layer of the lime, it was partially adding more of that mix of lemon and leaf green, but then I decided to add more green to the ratio and less lemon yellow, so it was kind of a swap. And basically this was to darken the colors to distinguish that it's a lime rather than just another lemon. I then darkened the rind again with a mixture of leaf green and some sap green. Coming back to the grapefruit again, I added in more opacity to the mix of vermilion hue and cad red deep, and I added in a tiny more of that red, but I don't want to go overboard with the red or the opacity. I still want the lemon yellow and the previous layers to poke through, so I'm being very careful about this. I need it to appear pinkish and slightly peach on the inside. That was my goal. For the third layer of the lemon, I just added in some yellow ochre to the mixture to keep it bright but still darken to create the illusion of depth using those same kind of feathery light strokes. So when I say that these watercolors were a pleasure to work with, I mean it. They really exceeded my expectations and honestly, I did I knew I'd like them, but I didn't know how much I would fall in love with them. And I mean, it's like bite my own fist. They're bloody gorgeous. I am absolutely in love with them. I'm so glad that I invested the money into making this this palette and I spent many hours creating it. And it was like like you saw, it was kind of maddening. So, I will leave you with the rest of this and you'll see me add a background here in just a moment. Everybody, what did you think? Did you enjoy this kind of video? Because if you did, 
please let me know in the comments below. I, I know it's a little bit different than what I usually record, but I wanted to take you through this process and on this journey with me. Uh, I love to be able to show my enthusiasm for the products that I use, not just my painting process. So if you have a favorite watercolor, let me know in the comments below what that brand is and why you love it, because I'm always open to learning about other brands as well. Some people love M. Graham, some people love Daniel Smith, some people, I, I don't have one particular brand that I love, but this could possibly be. It's definitely up in the top three. I, I love Sennelier and I love um, White Knights, that's a great one. So anyways, that could be a whole other separate video in and of itself. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video as always. I hope that you have a wonderful, inspiring day, and I will see you next time, everybody. Also, check the community tabs. I take polls there. So also follow me on social media, Instagram and Facebook. All links in the description. See you later, guys. Take care and keep creating things. And I had never really used a whole bind watercolor before. Go for it. Now, I actually had a few pans. You know what? I lied. I did have watercolor. I didn't I didn't realize that. Okay. I was I was on a roll there. Okay, helps me out. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe. But if you don't, no big deal either. But I just want to be able to talk. <laughs> why is this always it's always the sign off that's that's kinda of hard. I don't know why, because I just I'm like, ooh. And also and you'll see it if you want to follow me on the socials. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh! oh, I also have some Chroma Flow coming up. I'm going to do a review on that. That's in collaboration with Lindsay the Frugal Crafter. If you don't know who she is, I don't know where you've been because she's amazing. And she's got something for everybody on her channel. Any kind of artist, crafter too. And so she, I don't know, like she blows my mind because... <laughs> The way she's so creative and talented, I'm just like, I don't know where, how, why didn't I think of that? You know? So anyways, we have a collaboration and then there's also a um, watercolor collection coming up. I'm going to do more gouache videos. I have some gua a gouache review coming up. I have two watercolor reviews, colored pencils. I mean, there's just so much in store for this channel. So buckle up because this is going to be a wild ride. So as I showed you in the colored pencil collection, I have a lot of colored pencils and I know that a lot of people enjoy that video. Some were wondering if I could swatch some of the colored pencils and I definitely can do that. I'm trying to figure out in my brain if I want to do like one of every brand that I have or if I want to just kind of gung go gung ho and swatch everything because I need to, there's a lot of brands that I don't have swatched yet. I've never swatched my Pablos. Can you believe that? And I've never swatched polychromos. I have Albert Durer, but yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty sad. <laughs>